Warm welcome to the next part of our summer sailing expedition. After crossing the Baltic Sea and taking a good rest on the Finnish island of Jurmo, we are moving on to explore more of the Turku archipelago. We have four sailing destinations for you, along with some practical tips. And at the very end of the film, a few words about sailing directions for archipelago waters. Sit back and feel this holiday vibe. Let's sail! The first place on the list is Brenshaw, an island located 21 miles away from Yumo. The sail is nice, but completely different than on the open waters of the Baltic Sea. The traffic is heavy and being in this carries requires constant control of the position. Brenshaw is located between two islands. The depths are ok and the shallows are well marked, so the approach is easy. After a lazy spinnaker sailing, we arrive late and a bit concerned that there will be no free bath for us left. However, it turns out that our small boat is able to squeeze into the last available place close to the shore. Brenshaw is a charming little island where two Finnish families live all year long. They run a guest harbor and a campsite. How does their life look like? You can check it on the YouTube channel The Nordic Way. You will find the link in the description. Dear sailors, for you some practical info. In Brenshaw you will find basic services electricity on the quay, water at the pier entrance, showers at the campsite nearby. Sauna and barbecue area are of course there, as well as a bar with a delicious pizza. Moving to a buoy at a depth of 3 to 6 meters. There is room for about 30 yachts around the T-shaped pier. The mooring fee for 2021 season was 22 euros per day. The harbor has its own website. You can find the link in the film description. Rancher is a charming spot and a promising start to our archipelago tour. Next destination, however, is more practical. We head towards Nagu with the intention of getting food and water supplies and doing the laundry. The route to Nagu is short, only 13 miles long, but very interesting. It leads us through narrow passages between islands, rocks and coves. It twists and turns in the skerries, finally forcing us to give up sails for the engine. 
just before Nagu it becomes more spacious and the large bridge with 15 meters clearance indicates that we're close to civilization. Nabu is a popular summer resort and a large marina with 120 baths. Here you can fill up with water and supplies, connect to shore power and do the laundry. There are two markets, lots of pubs and a pretty good burger place, which can be found at the crossroads right on the way out of the marina. Moving to a buoy alongside our fingers, depths too, to 7 meters. The price for mooring is 35 euros per day. Marina has its website. You can find the link in the film description. What we will certainly remember from Nago is the highest recorded temperature this summer. On July the 14th, the thermometer reported 35 degrees in the shade. For the chilly north, it's definitely too much. That's why, after finishing with the logistics, we are relieved to escape and look for the shelter on the water. Płyniemy sobie już parę mil. Postawiliśmy sobie krawąsza. Teraz go tu pokażemy. O, taki ładny krawąszcz. Trwa wyścig o miejsce w marinie. W związku z czym te miejsce w saunie, tak. Jest ledwo tam 38 stopni, więc trzeba się regularnie dogrzewać. Prowadzi rejsik Ola. Tutaj uśmiechnie, tylko <laughs> From Nago we head northwest to Lotolma Bay, located 27 miles away. What lies ahead is a continued sailing slalom between the poles. Amazingly, each of the cardinal marks and fairway buoys is exactly where it should be. Zasuwamy jak przecinaki. 11,6 wiatru pozornego, 4,5 prędkości. Zobaczmy jak to wygląda na dziobie. Na pewno. The sun slowly approaches the horizon as we reach our destination. The entrance to the bay makes quite an impression. The channel is narrow but well marked, with a depth for about 2 meters. We are surrounded by tall reeds and are wondering if this is Finland or perhaps the Mazurian lakes. We are still used to the luxurious space of the open sea and some time needs to pass before we feel okay again with the tide sailing in the skerries.
Lotholma Marina is beautifully situated in a lovely inlet. This harbour consists of three piers. Two of them, further from the entrance, are for visiting boats. We spent here a nice evening with our new friends from Move with Spirit Yacht. And if not for the fierce mosquitoes, sea stories would probably last until the very morning. We could just go on about how unusual this place is, but we promised you some practical details. So here they go. Mooring to a buoy. There are about 50 places at a depth of 3 meters. Drinking water and electricity on the quay. A fee of 25 euros per night is paid at the restaurant. Showers are available at the campsite nearby. Shopping can be done in the town that is less than 2 kilometers away. Marina has its website. Link in the description. Cześć, czołem. Jesteśmy w miejscowości Lotholma. O ile dobrze <laughs> Nauczyłaś. Yes, I've learned the name and I repeat it again. Lotholma. A idziemy sobie teraz do pobliskiego miasteczka, która, którego nazwy nie pamiętam. Już może ty pamiętasz? Nie, skrzyżowanie. Idziemy do najbliższego skrzyżowania, gdzie skręcimy coś w lewo. I zobaczymy, co tam jest. Tak, tam powinny się znajdować yy, nie bunkry, tylko jaskinie. Jaskinie niejakiego Jeremiasza, czy skały niejakiego Obywatela Jeremiasza, Jeremiasza tutejszego. Który bardzo sprytnie się tam w tych skałkach podobno chował, ale to powiemy wam historię później. But let's start from the beginning. First, we take a walk to a nearby town called Kivima. Sobota rano. Jedna z głównych dróg. Cisza, spokój. Tylko my. Zasuwamy. Nic się nie dzieje. If you happen to visit the town, do not miss the so-called Jeremiah Caves. Natural rock formations with an interesting history dating back to the Crimean War. It was told that Jeremiah, resident of the area, had shown the British Navy soldiers the wrong way around the archipelago waters. When the British realized that they had been misled, they came back to take their revenge. However, Jeremiah hid in the caves so effectively that the soldiers didn't have the slightest chance of finding him. They had to give up and Jeremiah not only saved his life, but also became part of the local legend. We admired the rock formations, managed to find a steep cliff, but not the entrance to the caves. It looks as Jeremiah has hidden from us as well. After the relaxing time spent in Lotolma Bay, it's time to move on. So we let the lines go to see what the next days of our sailing adventure will bring.
it can be said that the next destination is just around the corner. We are heading to a place called Katanpa, which is just 9 nautical miles away. The distance is short, but the light wind does not allow us to sail too fast. We give way to a cable ferry running between the islands and slowly head towards our destination. Katanpa Harbour is situated in quite a large bay. There is one pier available for visiting boats with approximately 30 mooring buoys. Depths are 2 to 7 meters. Electricity and drinking water accessible on the quay. There are also barbecue area, showers and possibility to buy fuel. The price is 25 euros per day, payable at the cafe at the pier entrance. You will find the link to the harbour's website in the film description. Katanpa offers much more than just good sailing infrastructure and a beautiful place to relax. The site is a real attraction for history lovers. In the 19th century, when this area belonged to the Russian Empire, Katanpa Bay was used as a war port. The location of the peninsula made it possible to control all three waterways running through the archipelago sea. Therefore, in 1910, a fortress was built here. It was the northernmost part of the fortress's chain, built to protect St. Petersburg. In order to build the fort, prisoners were brought to Katanpa. They built almost 2 kilometers of paved roads, which in some places were up to 8 meters wide. The roads are still there, as well as the cannon batteries and the bunkers, which the fortress was equipped with. Wsiadłem sobie na górę tych zabudowań i widzimy działo. Powiem szczerze, że jestem pod wrażeniem tej konstrukcji. Ponieważ wśród takich kamieni, jak tutaj widzimy, postawienie betonowego bunkra i na tym wieżyczki to jest praktycznie z morza nie do zobaczenia gdzie to stoi wejdziemy, tam widzę, że drzwi są otwarte to wejdziemy sobie na dół mamy jakieś pozostałości wieżyczki strzelniczej to pewnie też był jakiś kawałek dział wstawiony After the Russian revolutions of 1917, Finland regained its independence. 
and a year later also the peninsula was returned to the Finns. During World War II, Finnish troops were located in Katampa, but they practically did not participate in the war. The buildings and parts of the fortifications remained intact. After the war, Katampa was used as a prison. The main task of the convicts was to extract paving stones from the quarries. It is said that those stones still lie not only on the Finnish roads, but also on the streets of many other European cities. Afterwards, the peninsula was used as a military training ground and a guard fort. And in 1999, the place was open to tourists. Katanpa is the last place in the Turku archipelago that we wanted to show you. But before saying goodbye, let's have a look at the sailing directions for these shallow, varied waters. First of all, we need to say that the waters of the Turku archipelago are very well marked. We did not experience any discrepancy between what's on the map and what's ahead. Two electronic data sources we used, CMAP and Navionix, worked perfectly, both in terms of voyage and depths. Though the accuracy of both maps often ends as you approach the port, this knowledge can easily be supplemented by using local sailing directions. We recommend two of them. The first one is Bezokshamnar, which is simply a list of ports. We bought the directions for about 20 euros upon arrival in a shop at Yurmo. However, you can also order the booklet in advance. You'll find links with examples in the film description. Moreover, an electronic version of the sailing directions can be found on the following website. The second directions, the Great Harbour Book, has a Finnish and English version. This one is much more comprehensive and contains a lot of helpful pictures. Unfortunately, it was not available for sale locally, so it's worth considering to buy it before the cruise. The Turku archipelago comprises dozens of attractive sailing destinations. We strongly encourage you to visit the area and hope that the information presented in the film will be helpful in planning your own voyages. In the meantime, you are leaving the archipelago and heading further north to the waters of the Gulf of Botnia. And we already invite you for the next episodes of our sailing vlog. See you soon!